these areas. The Section Analysis command can be used to cut through the components in the model. With the Section Analysis enabled, it's much easier to see if components may be interfering or to measure the distances between components. This grinder vise has a number of components that interact with one another, such as the vise screw going into the sliding jaw. Since I can't see into this recess, I'll use the Section Analysis command to cut through the parts and look in. The Section Analysis command can be accessed from the Inspect drop-down menu at the top. I'll enable it, and the dialog box prompts me to select a face to use to cut through the model. In this case, I want to cut long ways down the middle of the model. There isn't a face on the model that is down the center, so I'll use one of the origin planes to create the Section Analysis. I'll choose the XY plane, and the preview shows the cut through the model. I could use the manipulator in the graphics area to offset or rotate the section view, or I could use the entry boxes in the dialog box. But for now, I'll leave them at zero to cut down the middle of the vise. I'll click OK to complete this section analysis. A couple things happened when I clicked OK. The model view updated, with the various components displayed in different colors, and an analysis folder was added in the browser, where this section analysis view can be turned on or off. I want to highlight this point, that the section analysis isn't actually cutting the components in the model. It's simply a visual effect that's placed on the model. In addition, the analysis persists in the browser no matter the model's state, meaning that additional features can be added or modifications made. If needed, it can be turned on or off at any point. Now that I can see inside the components, I can do a number of things like checking for interfaces or measuring the distances between components. The vise screw doesn't seem to have any interferences inside the recess, but I can see an interference on the right where it fits into the handle. I'll use interference detection to see if any of these components have interferences. I'll enable the tool from the inspect drop-down menu, then select all three components, the sliding jaw, the vise screw, and the handle. Now, I'll click Compute, and only one interference appears in the results dialog. This is shown graphically in the canvas, with the entire volume created by the interference. This volume is calculated for the entire model, even with the section analysis visually cutting down the middle. In addition, I want to check and see if the vise screw will hit this face of the jaw plate before the sliding jaw comes into contact with the collar on the vise screw. I'll use the measure command to do this. I'll select both the jaw plate and the end of the vise screw and note the value shown. Now, I'll restart the selection to measure the other distance. I'll select the end face on the sliding jaw and the front face on the collar. And I can see that the value is the same as before. This means that all of the faces I measured will come into contact at the same time, which is the intended design. 